Hey, welcome back to the studio, and if it's your first time with us, we're happy to have you. This is day three of filming back to back to back, and I'm pretty stoked about it. Um, I'm getting a new rhythm. Yesterday, I trimmed three mugs. This is the first mug that I trimmed. The second mug that I trimmed, the concave kind of a one. The third mug, my favorite, with the raised foot, is this one. So in this video, I'll be doing a variety of handles. So if you are new to handle making, or if you want some new ideas for making handles for your cups or for your mugs, then this video should be good for you. So let's get to it. This first mug, I'll do a simple handle. Um, I carved a groove in here when I trimmed it yesterday. You can see that. So I, I feel like this is a great place to actually attach the bottom of the handle and integrate it into the base. Then have it just kind of come up like a simple question mark, a simple ear shape question mark handle. Nothing, you know, super fancy. It's a basic handle. And then I think I will actually coat the bottom of the foot here, or the side of the bottom of the piece, in black porcelain. So I can easily smear it into it. Because when you're adding handles to colored clay like this, it's hard because you don't want to smear the colors underneath. Unless you don't care about it being a little bit messy. Corey Brown is a pro at this. Corey Brown will attach black handles to his work. So he's a good artist to check out if you're curious about adding different colored handles to colored clay. Okay, mug number two. Uh, I'm a fan of this kind of a shape, this form. It's kind of concave form. With this one, I love putting... Let me ask you a question. Remember Krista Asad? I mentioned her yesterday in the trimming video. This is one of her mugs. So it's not the same shape, but it's kind of a concave shape and it's a one fingered handle. And she uses these little rings that she kind of, she actually throws and adds these on, or when she's throwing, she adds these in by kind of pressing in around it. So she uses those rings as a way to kind of ground the handle. This is a one fingered handle. And I can tell you that this is one of the most amazingly like ergonomically correct handles and comfortable handles that I've ever seen on a mug before. So anyway, I'm going to add a, a handle like this one, okay, a single one fingered handle if you haven't tried this yet, try it. If you tried it and you don't like it, tell me and we'll have a discussion. I have mug number three. This one has the most intricate striping pattern on the outside. It has the most intricate foot, the raised foot with all those colorful patterns there. And because this one has these like nice tight lines of color, I think we'll use some colored clay that's also stacked to emphasize that some more. I need about maybe like a five inch handle for this. I'm gonna have it taper a little bit. I'm gonna run my finger through it, pull my thumb through the handle to give a groove that will hopefully match the groove in the bottom of that mug I just showed you. First couple are just more delicate. I'm using just these parts of my finger, my thumb, my index finger, right in between here. Just to squeegee the clay, squeegee, squeegee. Now I'm just trying to taper this at first. Kind of thin it out a little bit, add some water to it, make it more fluid. Now that I have kind of like the length that I want, or at least the fluidity that I want, now I'll take the handle and I'll add a groove in it. So this little bit, see this bottom part here? It's a little teardrop. If that ever happens to you when you're pulling a handle, you can just take your finger and pinch it. It's also a great way to end it too. Put that aside. So now, I know I have enough for the handle-ish. You can see if I cut off about there, get a decent handle. But I'm going to start to work just this side of it. So I'll leave it this wide, it's a good width for a handle. But I'm gonna make it a little bit um, more narrow so that it's more comfortable to hold. So just on this, I'm gonna go back and forth. Wish I was a lefty, it'd be easier for this video to show you. Here. This, pull, pull, this side too. You need to alter your hands from each side, otherwise your handle will get curved in one direction, which you probably don't want. Take the sides and pull your hand down the sides just to keep it straight. There's no set number for how many times you should pull the handle before you get more water on your hands, but you'll get a feel for it, like every 10 times, every five times, depending on, on your clay. You have way more than I need, which is good. You always want more. Here's my handle. 
take my finger, my thumb, and I'm going to pull through it as I go down to the bottom. I'm also curving my index finger on the back of it as I'm pushing my thumb into it. There's a fifth pull through the handle, all the way to the bottom. And I'll do a pass with just water to clean it up. Go. I'll do a few more. There's one, two, great. There. So it got a lot thinner, you can see. But it has this nice groove in it now. That's what I'm shooting for. You want to have a big, chunkier, meatier part at the top. That's where all the pressure and stress from a handle is when you're using it, so always more at the top. If you have extra clay, you can just kind of plop it on here like this, and mush it down to a wood board, right? And then you can decide how you want it to hang. So imagine this is a table, right? So if I want it to be, you know, like that, if that's going to be good, I can leave it like that, or I can mush this clay more in this direction. I feel like that's more of what I want right there. Whoa! <sighs> right. So you gotta be careful though, obviously. You can definitely see the handle I want in that shape. We'll do a white handle for this one just to kind of give it some variety. I was watching the Great Pottery Throwdown today, um, and the guy was just like, you gotta pull with confidence, which is true. It's not so much like tough, it's just like <laughs> forceful or purposeful. All right, I gotta focus. As I flatten this out, it's gonna be a little bit wider, which is good. If it's not working out for you, or if you're getting like really, really thin spots, you can always pull more from the top. You can kind of like do a couple of quick pulls on the handle, and that'll force clay down from this extra area down to the side. Sure up the sides real quickly, make sure that they're even. There, it's pretty good so far. I'm just gonna loop this like that. Now I don't want perfectly parallel lines here, I want kind of a little bit of like a taper outward. All right, and get some colored clay for this last one. We don't need much. I have a little bit of an idea of what I'm planning here. So I will, I will mush these together first. That's good enough, run this back and forth. So now we will twist it. Keep twisting it just gradually. Taffy. So I'm going to pull this one out to a handle shape. Cool. Good. Great. Wonderful. I'm trying not to disturb this because it's colored. Okay. So now it's time to attach all these. Let's get to it. This black one is stiffened up nicely, so we'll cut that. One finger handle. Looks pretty good so far. And then we'll attach this beautiful, beautiful rainbow stripe. So I'm gonna cut this as rough cut first. This has been sitting out for about five hours. I want this to come up like this a little bit. The angle needs to be cut off differently. I want it to come up. If I want it to come out, that's fine. If this is fine. Actually, that might even be pretty good. Nice spot for my thumb. Mark up where it's supposed to go. I like to gouge deeply first with my heel tool. Then add a little bit of water, try to get into those cracks, and gouge some more. Score some more. You know, for me, handles are like a love-hate thing. I love putting a good handle on, but I always worry about putting one on and then it messing up and breaking off, or it's always extra stress. I like to score, rescore, add water, score, rescore. action there. A little twist, a little wiggle. For now I'll just kind of mush it and knit it in there. So I'm really sorry, it's hard to do a video this way. They have like just the right sharp edge. This is a makeup sponge. Done. That'll go back in the box. I already cut this handle just quickly, but I cut it too big on purpose. Okay, I want a little bit, I don't want it to be perfectly straight because if I do it straight, it has a tendency to kind of like close off and become like a weird balloon shape. So if you leave it this way, typically it will even out or stay the same after you attach it. Now these don't have a lot of contact points. 
So it is crucial that you actually cut this a little bit with the curvature of your mug in the middle. You definitely don't want it to be like downward facing like that. So I would either flip this or have it be like level. So middle, lower, higher. It's really your choice. Up here is funky. Down here, middle is actually pretty good. And this is my first handle demo. So, so I gotta work on my filming skills for handles. Like, I haven't found the best way to do it, but I'll get there. Certainly not least, <clears throat> this one, we're gonna do something a little bit different. A beer wants to crack. So here's the shape that I have, it's kind of pointy. I'm gonna roll up the bottom. It was just way too crackly. Did not look good, so. Number two, I'm gonna attach a wad of clay and pull a handle from here. So let's try number two. So we're gonna twist it a little bit, so a little bit of a twist. Guys, you know, I'm really sorry. This blue is giving me all kinds of difficulty. It is not user friendly at all. So I'm gonna quit on this one. I'm gonna shave this off, sand it off later. I'm done with this one. I liked it too. I really liked it. it is what it is. It's very annoying. Probably can sense it in my voice. <sighs> okay. Well, I think we're done here. So that's how it works sometimes. I don't have 40 mugs here. I just had three and I had a mishap with one of them. That's how it is sometimes. Um, it kind of kills the momentum that I had going with all of this, but I will say I enjoyed you know, having three days in a row to make the video and post, video, post, video, post. So hopefully you've enjoyed this as well, these three days in a row. Um, it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. If you've enjoyed this video, if you've learned something new, um, give it a like so others can see it. Other than that, um, stay safe, be healthy, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Pass patiently, waiting, passionately, smashing every expectation, every action, act of creation. Laughing in the face of casualties and sorrow. For the first time, I'm thinking, past tomorrow. And I am not throwing away my shot.